Yeah. So let's, let's, I just want to map out that basic because we've said like, okay, if all these things aren't working, then fructose gets converted to fat or the fat gets converted to other fats, you know, fatty acids get converted to fats. And that's what leads to this production of fat in the liver. So I want to just use this diagram to show how that's happening. I think it matched it out nicely. Obviously, if you're looking at this, it looks a little complex at first, but we'll break it down. So basically at the top here, we've got these inputs coming in. We've got the carbohydrates, which they're noting particularly fructose. Uh, you've got the free fatty acids that are coming in and then protein as well, which the protein isn't particularly relevant for, for this right now. Yep. So when we're looking at both the carbohydrates and the free fatty acids, both of them end up getting into the mitochondria and uh, you know, which is right here and going through the citric acid cycle uh, and or beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is just for the fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And what's basically, if there is some blockage going on here, something's not happening uh, or something's not working well, you end up with a large amount of citrate. And we'll talk about this uh, a little bit later on. Slide, in, yeah. yeah, yeah. But basically you get this excess citrate and that citrate is the thing that's right here is the thing that gets converted to the fat. So we see that right here. This is that pathway where you get a, the citrate gets, it basically leaves the mitochondria. Then it gets uh, converted to acetyl-CoA, then malonyl-CoA, and then palmitate, which is uh, one of our saturated fats. And then the palmitate can also be converted to stearate, which is another one of the saturated fats that our bodies produce. Those are the two main ones that, that are produced yeah. from any type of substrate coming in. And right. I think it's important to point out for people because everybody like wants to hate on palmitate. And it's like, that is the primary fatty acid that our body's going to produce first. Produce, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is that basic process of fatty acid synthesis. And it comes from any, like anything that's blocking the citric acid cycle, the, the Krebs cycle, mitochondrial respiration, anything that's blocking that is going to lead to an accumulation of citrate. That citrate then leaves the mitochondria and ends up getting converted to fat. And this can happen both from using carbohydrate as an entry point into uh, mm -hmm. mitochondrial respiration or the free fatty acids. Um, and just for clarification here, you see that the free fatty acids are carried into the mitochondria from that CPT1. It's carnitine, palmitine transferase 1 alpha, right? Yeah, carnitine, palmitoyl transferase 1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which there, it's important to note that just because people will, you know, when you're talking through the physiology, people will talk about that as, as a, an important step to consider. Yep. So you have, so this is just a basic fatty acid synthesis. And then along with this, when you have this process shifting toward all this fatty acid synthesis, you then further block respiration. And so the, one of the things they talk about here is that the melanyl CoA, the presence of melanyl CoA blocks the CPT1A, the carnitine, the carnitine palmitoyl transferase. So it blocks the carrier. Yeah. The, the thing that, that transports or allows for the fatty acid basically to get into the mitochondria or the acetyl-CoA to get to the mitochondria, the yep. melanyl-CoA blocks that. So everything, and there's a bunch of other enzymes that go on and blockages that happen along this whole process that prevent things from being oxidized more. Cause of what they're basically saying is we've got this overload. Things are not working well. We're not able to produce energy or do other things with it. So it has, we're just going to have to shift towards storing everything extra that we have right now as fat. And when this happens, there's another, you know, another two things I want to point out. Well, one thing here is, is that CD1. So when we end up with a lot of production of palmitate and stearate, those fatty acids in the liver, we then end up with an activity, an increased activity of SCD1, which converts these fatty acids to monounsaturated fats. We've got the palmitolate and the oleate, and those then can get used to produce um, to produce triglyc triglycerides. There's a couple different pathways you can see here that basically go from the production of fatty acids to the production of triglycerides. And the triglycerides is just a few fatty acids put together with a, with a glycerol backbone. And that triglyceride is the fat that we're talking about when you're talking about uh, fatty liver is high amounts of triglycerides. And that gets that just the downstream conversion effect from these fats, these fatty acids that get produced. And then that's where you end up with all these triglycerides over here. And so the reason I wanted to highlight that CD1 is because we talked about that in more detail yeah. in a uh, previous episode about why it is definitely a uh, something you don't want to see elevated. It's a sign that that this is happening, that you know, you're not using the substrate well and you're producing a lot of fat, but it's not necessarily the target or the main focus that is determining something. It's more just on the surface level as a response. So uh, or as a symptom. It's like a marker. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add here to this graphic? We'll, we'll dig in in a little bit in some more detail about what actually is going on in the mitochondria here that is causing this to happen in the first place. Um, and there's a really great graphic that we'll use to, yeah. to dig into that in a second. The one thing I just wanted to highlight here and something that you, t- you did talk about and you did mention is that it's this buildup of citrate in this system is where you start to see this, like the citrate, and then you move to malleal CoA, and then you have the shutdown of um, CPT1A. So mm-hmm. it's like this is the the derangement happens in the mitochondria, and and then eventually what you see is the build up of citrate, and then that's when you start to see okay, once you start to see like a high, it's it's all about concentrations, right? So once you reach the certain concentration here, you start to see things move downstream into producing the palmitate and stearate, and then mm-hmm. we did talk about this in the SCD1. Uh, what was that about the fire in a bottle stuff? That was the podcast that we talked about yeah. this and that the SCD one, I think we, uh, we came to the conclusion that it was upregulated because when you convert the, the saturated fatty acids into the monounsaturated fatty acids, they're easier to process and move around and, and, and things like that. And then uh, eventually what we showed is that when you have this high buildup of the saturated fatty acids inside the, the cell, that's when you start getting the lipotoxicity. So the SCD1 here is actually in there for a reason. It, it, like, it's a release valve on what's going on inside the cell. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to highlight the, those, those key areas. So it's this concentration of citrate based on what's deranged in the mitochondria. And then also um, the SCD1 is like a release valve for the production of these saturated fatty acids so that they can be processed. Because you have the liver, which, which you have basically have like a storage in the fatty acids and you, I, you can have it intramuscularly. You don't necessarily want so much of that, but you have like this, the liver, you have the depots for the fatty acids, which can take these triglycerides and you can, the liver can hold some as well and it can move for storage. But once you start like maxing out that system or you impair like this process of exporting it, whatnot, you can start to run into some serious issues. And, and that's where you start to like, it's part of this lack of ability to basically export the fats out of the liver is one of the the problems you can't export the Mm -hmm. fat. And then you also have like the derangement of the mitochondria. So you're basically creating bottlenecks inside the cell. And that's, that's where you start seeing the derangement happens inside the cell with these bottlenecks. I think that that's, that's the key that we're going to get to in the next couple slides or whatever graphics, whatever you want to call them. Cause it's not really a PowerPoint, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah. The the other thing I want to point out here, is that when everyone's so focused on fructose causing these problems, but if you have this issue with mitochondrial respiration, then you still can have the free fatty acids coming in, getting converted to acetyl-CoA outside of the mitochondria, and then they go to be converted directly into triglycerides themselves. Like basically through the, well, they're showing it in a dotted line here, but really it's going through this whole pathway over here yep. um, through the melanin coa and whatever else. But this can be caused just as much by fatty acids as it is by fructose. So just wanted to highlight that as well, that an issue with any sort of mitochondrial respiration here, that's really where this is all centrally happening, is going to encourage these things to move toward uh, fat. And what a lot of people focus on is this idea that it's not a problem with respiration. Instead, it's when you've got so much, you've been doing it so much, you've got so much substrate, whether it's fructose or fats, that you're going to produce a lot of ATP. And then that's going to slow this down because you've got enough energy. So then that's going to cause all these other issues. But in reality, that is very, very rarely the case. Normally the problem is things are getting stopped way before you have too much energy, but instead there are other things blocking this process that um, prevent, actually prevent the production of energy. So yeah. And again, to, to clarify, and we'll show this in the other diagram, um, this, this is not the only thing that happens when things are blocked in the mitochondria. You also have the conversion. You can increase the conversion to glucose, increase the conversion to uh, lactate and things like that. I mean, you convert to glycogen as well, but this is just yep. what's happening on the fatty acid production side, or sorry, I should say the triglyceride synthesis side. 